What's up everybody, it's Charles. Today I'm going to show you how to use the jack and spare tire on a Volkswagen Tourag. This is going to be the same on almost all Tourags, and this is actually how most VW jacks work as well. Now, I hope you will never have to use this video, but if you do, here's the step-by-step -step on how to do it right. Let's start by going through the toolkit that should be in your vehicle. Of course, this is something you want to really practice and get familiar with, at home so that you're not having to just figure it out on the side of the road. If we lift up our cargo cover and then our toolkit cover, we have access to the spare tire as well as the toolkit. We can take our little orange hook and hook it up. Some of them will have a prop over on the side. First thing I like to do is take the spare tire out. We'll loosen the wing nut and remove it and the little piece that holds the wheel. And I like to leave this inside the car so it doesn't get lost. Next, we're gonna lift the spare tire up and out. Now we can take our tool kit out, undo the Velcro strap, lift the top portion out, take out the lug wrench, the jack, AKA the Widowmaker, and our wheel chocks. These are the tools that you should have in the kit a small compressor to inflate that compact spare, a screwdriver, a hanger for the wheel, a little puller to pull the wheel caps, of course the jack, the lug bolt tool, and some wheel chocks. One of the first things when you get a new car is to make sure you have all this stuff and really make sure that this thing works, otherwise you're gonna be toast on the side of the road. First, let's hook up the compressor. To do that, we need to open the hood. We're gonna hook it up to the jump start posts right here on the driver's side. And we wanna start with the car off. Here's our compressor. We'll flip it over and you'll see the nozzle that goes to the tire. And then the connection to hook up to that jump start post. Go ahead and pull all this wiring out. Next, we'll go ahead and hook our leads up to our jump start post. We're gonna do our red lead to our positive post and our black lead to the ground. And that leaves plenty of wire for us to go to our compressor. Next, we'll take our compressor near whatever wheel we're working on, in this case, the left rear. Now, we are going to inflate this tire with our little air compressor. You do not want to have it on the car with the weight of the vehicle on it while you're inflating it. It can wreck the spare. This is a space saver spare. You pretty much have to buy it as an assembly and we don't want to have to do that. So we'll take the valve stem cap off. Don't lose this. It also has a tool to remove the Schrader valve. We can then twist on our fitting for our compressor. Go ahead and start the car and let it run while you're doing this so it doesn't kill your vehicle battery. Turn the compressor on let it run for a maximum of 10 minutes, and we wanna set the tire pressure to 50 PSI. Once you hit that three and a half bar or 50 PSI mark, go ahead and take the compressor off. Put our valve stem cap on so we do not lose it. Take our wheel chocks, chalk the wheel. Be sure to set the parking brake. All right, let's get this wheel off. I like to bring part of the foam with me and set it on the ground so that we can set our stuff in that little tray. Start by removing the wheel bolt covers. Next, we're gonna use our lug wrench and just barely loosen all five wheel bolts. The reason you wanna loosen those first is so that you're not yanking on it while the car's up on the jack, rocking the entire car. Next, we are going to set the jack in the proper location. This is the part I see people make mistakes on the most. This jack works just fine if you do it the right way, but if you do it the wrong way, it can lead to problems, including a damaged jack or the car falling off. So be really careful here. Underneath the vehicle, there's a very specific spot the jack needs to go. We can see this trim cover right here. This needs to come off and we're gonna put the jack right here. Remove this cover. Here's our pinch weld. This is where we're gonna put our jack. For the back, you can also use this part of the pinch weld. For a front wheel, there is no cover. Just use this open pinch weld right here. We're gonna take our jack and we're gonna set it with this flat part right here on the ground. Next, we're gonna swing out the lever and twist it. Once we have it separated a little bit, we'll slide it underneath the car and line it up on the pinch weld. What we wanna do is we wanna take this and we wanna line it up with the pinch weld. Once it's lined up in the pinch weld, we can slowly twist it up till it completely sets in the pinch weld. What we also wanna do is make sure that the bottom pad is flat on the ground. 
If this is not flat on the ground, you run the risk of knocking the car off the jack. If you're not on a level surface or not on a flat surface, a block of wood underneath here does really, really well to hold it. Now, I only lift the car up high enough so that the wheel is off the ground. Once it's off the ground, I stop. No need to lift it any higher than that. Next, we can go ahead and remove our wheel bolts. Now, before you undo the last one, I like to take my foot and set it up against the wheel and hold the top of the wheel and tire assembly with my hand, thread our wheel hanger in at the top. Now we can slide our wheel right off. Now we take our spare, start your wheel bolts, Take your wheel hanger out for the last one. Go ahead and just snug all the bolts down. We don't want to worry about tightening it too tight with the wheel off the ground. Now we can go ahead and lower the car down, turning the jack counterclockwise or anti-clockwise if you prefer. Remove the jack. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our lug wrench and go back and tighten all of these. The torque spec on this is 180 newton meters or about 133 foot pounds. So that should give you an idea of how tight you want to tighten it. This is only temporary, and I don't expect most people to have a torque wrench in the back of their car, so just get it tight. I put the lug wrench on the bolt, and I lift up and tighten the bolts in a star pattern. And that's it, you're pretty much done. Now remember, this is only temporary, so you wanna get your other tire fixed as soon as you possibly can. Once we have our tire change done, now comes the worst part, and that's putting everything back where it belongs. Our wheel chocks have to go like this with the fat sides together. Our lug wrench, of course our jack, which we need to roll all the way down. Once it's rolled all the way down, you need to make sure this piece is tucked all the way in or your spare tire won't fit. Next, we'll put the top half of our foam in. All the parts we use go back in their little spots. Let's go ahead and take our clamps for our pump off of our car. Close your little power cover there. Next, we gotta deal with our, uh, our pump here, the odds of this fitting in here, again, ever are pretty much zero. The worst part of this whole job is rolling this back up. We'll go ahead and put it back in our case, strap it back down. Go ahead and put your trim cover back on. It does have to slide in at the back and then snap in. When you're done with the spare tire, we need to deflate it before we can reinstall it back in the trunk. In order to do that, we are going to take our valve stem cap off. Then what we're going to do is we're going to flip it upside down, put it into the valve stem, and twist. On the other side of this valve stem cap is a Schrader valve tool. Now you're going to start getting airflow out pretty quickly, and eventually the Schrader valve will come out of the valve stem. Just like when you're inflating it, you wanna make sure that the tire is not on the car while you're letting all the air out. That can actually damage the tire. Once all the air's out, take your Schrader valve, drop it back in the valve stem. We'll take our tool, you can see the little notch there in it, and we'll go ahead and tighten the valve stem back up, flip our valve stem cap over, and reinstall it back on the valve stem so we have it for next time. Our last step is going to be putting our spare tire back. Put your retainer on, put your wing nut on, make sure it's snug, double check you got all your tools, and you're done. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap it up there. Questions, comments, you know what to do. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.